Uh, you heard most of it, who am I, uh, why I will speak about what I will speak about. And uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself in a bit different way than you're used. So it's obvious that I'm male. And it's obvious that I'm white Caucasian. And this is not obvious, but there is my girlfriend sitting, so I'm straight. Also, I'm middle-aged, and my girlfriend would say crisis, probably. Uh, I'm 193 centimeters high, 95 kilograms, maybe now 100, because of the sweets that I'm eating for the last couple of months, and pretty much average. Nothing special, nothing from outside of the normal margins, boundaries, or whatever. And if you ask Google, Google thinks the same. When you type their human body diagram, you will have 95% of results of a white Caucasian male in middle age. So it's human. So Google says when you're human, you're actually white Caucasian male. You're not a woman. If you're human, you're a man. So that is the first type of discrimination worldwide, because if you check all these photos, there is only one girl, the third one in the bottom row, and there is also in one more diagram both men and women. So this is the part where you already realize how deep is discrimination in the world. So why am I talking about this when I am white Caucasian, male, straight, so I shouldn't be talking about this, it should be someone else someone who is from marginalized group, but maybe someone from marginalized group will never have a chance to talk about this. So that is why we need to talk instead of them, to be their voice in the community and to help them, because we will always have a chance and they will not if we don't change something. So I'm, I was construction site supervisor for 12 years before my career in WordPress and IT. Then, I was managing 150 people every day, and 149 were men. There is a joke on construction site. What is the best looking woman on a construction site? Everyone that appears on the construction site. So I was working with men every day. Why me again? I was deep and tech house DJ and producer for 15 years. I was really successful in that. I was playing music all around the world, and imagine what in top 10 DJs. There is only one colored DJ, and one who is mixed race, it's Afrojack. His father is uh, Dutch and mother is from Suriname. All other are white Caucasian. So, when I came from that men's world to WordPress community six, seven years ago, it was wow, like this is the best community in the world. We are so open-minded, we are so welcoming, we are not discriminating, we are, the inclusivity is so important in, important in this community. But you mostly feel like that, uh, something died here, no, nope. it's back. So, first thing that you learn when you come to WordPress community, when you become a part of WordPress community, is that our core values are diversity, inclusivity, accessibility, and equality. That is something that we always talk about, like, there is a lot of women, a lot of, uh, it's gender equality and everything else. We are like, let's say, some hipster style of community. But, and they really are, but I think that we are using those words more like a buzzwords, not like something that we are really giving some effort into it, and not something that I think, think that we are really work on, but it's something that we like to talk about, like our community is awesome. And if I ask you what we did for inclusivity last year, can someone tell me what WordPress did for uh, inclusivity in the, in the last uh, 12 months? You're all from the WordPress community. Give me one example of what we did. 
someone? No one? So you see that I'm right. Really important thing is also equity, above everything else. And we will have at the end one simple exercise to show you what equity is and why it's more important than equality. We are not doing enough, as you see. The most of you are part of some local WordPress communities, and you can't give me one example what you did for inclusivity, diversity, and equality or equity in your community, in your local community. And that is the place to start. It's not a place to start in WordCamp US or WordCamp Europe, because there is normal and it's expected to happen in, in that uh, high, let's say, the biggest conference. But you need to start in your local communities, in your meetup with 20 people. That is the place to start. It's too late when we come to WordCamp Europe. So, once I was in Philadelphia for WordCamp US, and uh, the room, my room, and the room of my colleague was on 27th or 28th floor, and it, was, it costed more than the rooms on the 10th floor, where the rest of the guys were. And I forgot to say why the rooms on the top floors are more expensive than on the lower floors, especially because I was a smoker then, and I need too much time with the elevator to reach the ground floor, to get outside, and the receptionist told me, probably because uh, they have a better view on the top floors. And that is why we have now something that I call uh, awareness elevator, and you will figure out why this awareness elevator is so important. So, if you're on the first level, you're lacking vision about diversity, about what is happening, about inclusivity, about community, because you have too many buildings around and you can't see anything except the place where you are. If you're on the second level, some buildings around you are shorter, so you can see a bit better than the uh, guys on the level one. And level three is clear visibility, so you can see everything what is happening. On the first level, people see diversity as adversity. What is the problem here? I spoke to one guy in, in Belgrade, and I was really disappointed with that conversation. He told me, yeah, look, I don't have a problem with gay people, as long as they don't say that they are gay what you just said. Because it's not obvious, you would say, I uh, don't hate black people un until they say they're black. But it's obvious when you see the black person that he's black. And for gay person, it's not obvious that he's gay. Probably you need to find out somehow. But I said, what is the difference if he's gay or not? So, yeah, before, before I find out, I can communicate normally and everything, but when I find, find out if they tell me I'm a bit different. So that is that adversity. You don't feel comfortable if you're surrounded by some people that you're not accepting so easily because you don't know enough about them. And it's okay, but we need to change that. That was okay. That was okay. But we need to change it from that lowest level like local meetups and everything else. On level two, Probably the most of us are on this level, somewhere. We know that it's morally uh, normal to have that diversity, inclusivity, but someone else will do it instead of us. We don't have to do anything, someone will. Because it's a sensitive topic, and we shouldn't talk about that too much, because someone maybe will hate us because of this, someone will, will maybe hate me after my talk today, but more or less I don't care if I help someone with this talk from marginalized group, because I was helping enough to white, Caucasian, male, straight, etc., etc. It's time to help someone else. And on the third level, you have to read this, to focus and to read this. The people, especially on leading positions like CEOs and leading big projects, knows how important diversity is for the projects, and they know how huge value diversity is bringing to a company, to a product, and to better uh, 
executing the tasks. Okay? Let's practice something together. Do we have a mic runner here? Awesome. I will need a mic. Yeah. Thank you. First of all, recall the situation when you felt excluded from some activity by a group. So, you expected to be invited, like to play football with your friends, or to go to play Xbox, or you expected to be invited for some party in a high school, whatever, just close your eyes and try to recall a situation when you felt excluded for, from a group. Let's do it. One, two, three, close your eyes, all of you. Okay. I you recall some situation when you felt excluded from a group? Someone? Don't be shy. Someone? Anyone? You were never excluded from any activity. Ever. No? Well, you are lucky ones. But I think, think that you lie. Definitely. Because it's not possible. Yeah, they, they are shy. Why are you shy? We are all friends here. Imagine that this is not friendly environment. How shy would you be? That you are from some marginalized group and this is uh, the place, this is not friendly for you. How would you feel then? You are not feeling comfortable to raise your hand in a friendly environment. Probably we are shy because we feel ashamed that we were excluded. Excluded yep. people feel guilty about the exclusion. Yeah, that, that's the point. But with discrimination, we are doing that every day to those people from marginalized groups. You were ex excluded from some activity maybe a couple of times in your life. And you feel bad about that and you're shy to talk about that. And what is the energy now in this room? Not so good, huh? We are all like, hmm, we shouldn't be talking about this. Okay. Let's do the same thing, but a bit better. Yep. Oh, yeah, awesome. I know. I know. That's the point. That is why I talk about that in public. Uh, Let's recall the situation when you felt included by some activity in a group and you didn't expect that you will be included. Like someone invited you and you were like, oh cool, they invited me for this event. I never expected that I will be invited. They have probably different energy. I see some faces smiling, changing from that sad face from before. So you need to know that how you felt first time when you closed your eyes and how you felt the second time when we talk about being included in some activity it's completely different energy now you're smiling first time you're all like watching in the floor and shy to talk about that can you give this imagine how people from marginalized groups feel every day every morning when they wake up they experience some kind of discrimination some kind of exclusion from a group where they probably want to belong to. They would like to belong to some group because it's normal for every human being to uh, have that wish to be a part of some group of something. When we say discrimination, it's probably especially because Bulgaria is now in the European Union. That discrimination by any, any type of discrimination is kind of let's say, a hike term, like discrimination, we are not doing that, we have a pride parade or something like that, so you think it's enough. They have one day in a year, they can walk on the streets, we will give them army, uh, armed troops to support them, because probably someone will kick their ass b without that. So we are doing enough, we have a pride, we will let them walk, and that's it. For LGBTQ, in example. So one day in a year, we gave them one day in a year and that's it, we're done. 
we are so cool community because we will give them from 365 days, they can have one. It's happening actually discrimination every single day, right next to you. Because probably you don't know. You are doing that every day, subconsciously, and you don't know that you're doing that. And probably very often you're doing that because of your religious or other beliefs. When we talk about religions, can we agree that if we say Islam, that probably all of you will think that that is the most aggressive religion in the world? Because they always have some ISIS, some uh, terrorist organization on, uh, with Islam in the back. But let me remind you that we have like 100 sects based on Christianity who killed 100 members, 1,000 members or whatever. So that is just, we are Christians and they are Muslims, so they are more aggressive. If you ask Muslims, they would say the same thing for Christians. So you need to switch shoes every time when you think about someone else. You need to understand why they are doing something and why they are like that. Discrimination is actually okay sometimes. It's okay when you're discriminating historically privileged group, like me. If you don't give me a job, if you hire this woman instead of me, it's okay. Because I was, the man was hired over a woman a million times in the last 100 or 200 years. So if you hire one time a woman over a man, it's fine. But maybe I will not feel like that. Also, it's okay when you reject a blind person for a position of a bus driver, because obviously the blind person can't drive a bus. Also, it's okay when a woman or a man rejects to be examined by an opposite gender, gynecologist or urologist, because that woman or a man could feel uncomfortable to be examined by a different gender a doctor. It's okay when a restaurant rejects to organize white supremacy dinner, but it's never okay to reject to hire a colored person because your restaurant is organizing white supremacy dinner. And in this case, there is also one more thing really interesting. Maybe the owner of that restaurant is not um, discriminating. He is discriminating only because he thinks that if he hires a colored person, he will lose his guests who are white supremacy uh, fascists. So, sometimes it can happen that you don't want, that you don't want to discriminate, but you think that you are forced to. And this is a very often situation. Also, it's never okay to say I don't want to be examined by a different skin color doctor or a different religion. It's okay different gender, but not different. It's not okay to reject a woman for a bus driver position because probably the woman is more than capable to drive a bus than the same as any, any man. And there is something that we call positive discrimination. This is a very important thing and this is a good thing to do. What we can do for the positive uh, discrimination? We can hire a woman over a man. Because every time when you have some hiring process, probably 95% of applications in IT industry are for men. And maybe 5% are women. Hire a woman over a man. Give them a chance. Hire any person from marginalized groups instead of me. So I'm average. So every time when I say me, it's white Caucasian male, middle-aged. So I had all the benefits of my race and of my skin color all my life. And accept a woman speaker for a word camp over a man. Every time when you're doing vetting, Accept woman rather than, than a man, someone from LGBT rather than a man. There is always someone to be invited to speak because 95% of speakers in the last 10 years were men. Now it's a better situation, but still we don't have process and procedures, but we are doing that because we think it's okay. 
external, not just accept and not just hire if someone applies. Reach out for a woman when hiring. Reach out for any person from marginalized uh, groups and reach out for a woman speaker. How? When you're organizing a uh, WordCamp, there is a lot of meetups like women in tech, um, front-end developers, ladies, our ladies. Ask them. Send them an email and say, look, we are organizing WordCamp and we would like some of you to share your experiences with JS, to share your experiences with our language. There is a way. And very often we say, yeah, but we have only, we had only five uh, women applications and 37 men, so that is why we have that ratio like 10 only 10% of women. Why? As I said, if you hire a woman or a man, it's not a big deal because I was hired so many times over a woman. Is it fair? Well, as I said, it might feel unfair for me to have her hired on my position if we have same competencies because only because of one reason. Uh, because it, we reap the spoils of the white male privilege for so long. So we are doing this for centuries. It's not something that we are doing for the last 10 years. We are doing this for centuries. Uh, we were conquering North America, Central America, South America, India, and we have them colonized for centuries, for thousands of years. And now, when someone from those colonized countries should be hired over a white man, you know, I think, hmm, we are not feeling good about that, because we are used to be hired over them. We are used to be hired over a woman, because women, they, they couldn't run Boston Marathon until 1973. It's like six years before I was born. It's not 100 years ago. It's 40 years ago. It's not ages, it's years. And, yeah, we are so spoiled that we can't accept that someone is hired over us. Like, probably because of those, our DNA changed by years, and that is how we are doing discrimination. And we think that we are not doing that. I was, I had a huge fight with my girlfriend in January, because I was 100% sure that I'm not discriminating, and she explained to me that I am. And step by step, I realized that actually it's not only me, it's the entire community, but we are doing that passively. We are not aware of that, that we are discriminating. Just by doing nothing, we are discriminating enough. Is there a more relevant person for the discrimination? Of course, no. Five minutes. Cool. I'm almost, almost done. Well, let's do something. You should try to get to know someone from LGBTQ, immigrants or racial minority, people with little or no economic resources. All of these are marginalized groups. Some women or the elderly, ex-convicts, drug addicts or illiterate. These are all marginalized groups. You have uh, their lives are mostly in the loop you don't have a chance here, then you fail here, then you fail here, and you're not trying anymore. And then we say, yeah, but they don't want, they don't want to try. They did, they tried a million times, they failed, no one ever helped them, and of course that they will not try again. Especially for, let's say, uh, ex-convicts and why they are going back to prison, because no one will hire ex-convict. And you don't know if... Niva Bateria and Isco. will be done soon, no worries. And people with disabilities. You will see that you have more than, more things in common with them than you thought, than you ever think about. And you, you will see that you, you will have only maybe one difference with someone from marginalized group. And probably you have more differences with me than someone from marginalized group. Why? Let's do something. Uh, which kind of music do you listen? Electronic music? Can you raise hand if you're listening to electronic music? Okay. Rock? Awesome. 
folk. And now, <laughs> just one guy, I expected this. Uh, Apple phones, Apple devices, okay. Samsung. You, you know why you're doing this, you don't know. Look, look around when you raise your hand. Do you like more summer, winter, or spring? Summer? Summer. Okay, winter? Okay. Spring? Yeah. Okay. And the last, your favorite color? Blue? Red? Okay. Black? Okay. If you see who raised the hand, probably every time it was mixed. Who, uh, who is using Apple phone didn't have the same color with a person who liked the same music as he did. So all of you were mixed. Someone likes this, but use this. Someone likes this, but use that. Do you think that it doesn't really matter if there is some black person or LGBTQ person or a woman or a man? We were talking about something else. So probably there will be only one thing different between people from marginalized group and you. And it's sexual orientation, in example. But probably some of them are sharing more interest with you than someone for whom you think that is more compatible with you. The only incompatibility of the person with different sexual orientation with you is maybe the only difference between you and that person. And you're listening to different kind of music, you like different kind of art, you like different kind of movies, you're not watching the same TV show, you like, I don't know, Game of Thrones, he likes something else. But with a person who has only one thing different from you, and that is sexual orientation, you have all other interests the same. So you're more compatible with that person than with the person that you thought. Because you were afraid, probably. So that is why I said, try to get to know a person from each of marginalized group, just to see how many things you have in common with them. Would you ever really spend an hour with me talking about football and about things that you really don't care about, or with someone from some marginalized group who is sharing the same interest with you? Honestly. Who, who would like to spend an hour with someone from marginalized group rather than someone from, let's say, with me, because I'm pretty much. Of course, the most of us would rather spend an hour with someone from marginalized group. Why we are not doing that? Why we are still afraid of people from marginalized groups? It's 21st century, let's, let's change it. Try to do what I said. Try to get to know someone from marginalized group. At least one person from each, try to talk with them and to see how much we are failing in being humans. Just because we don't know how to, let's say, deal with differences. So, what I said equity is very important. What equity means? I will need four volunteers, not volunteers camp volunteers, but some people from audience. Oh, awesome, you're here. What is equity? We have one small task. Come, come with me. And you can come. Yeah, like, yep, yeah. okay. So I'm the tallest one. Precise. Okay. The task is simple. You need to touch the same spot as I'm touching right now. And I will stand here. Come. Okay. No, you need to do it by your finger. Okay, bro. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. There you go. Take it, do it. So this is equity. And stand next to me. And this is equality. That is equality. So, in equality, we have, the, we have the same starting point. And it's not fair. Because I'm 
10 centimeters taller than he is. And we have the same tasks. So it's fine. It's the last slide, actually. So I'm like in one minute precise. So uh, equity means giving the same level for everyone. So if the task is to touch that point and I have advantage, they need to have the same advantage. So if he needs 10, 10 centimeters more, give him 10 centimeters to climb on. Then we can compete for the position, for the same position. But if the task is like this, that they don't have anything to climb on, I will be in a huge advantage over them. So that is equality. And every time when you say equality, recall this situation. So equality is not enough because equality is the same starting point. And we can't have same. If you're running 100 meters with Usain Bolt, you need to start running on 50 or 60 meters because he will catch you. Even on those 40, he will catch you. But you need to have some advantage. Thank you. If you have any questions, thanks for being here first. If you have any questions for me, I will be around for like an hour. Uh, we also have one, uh, we are starting one, one website. It will be diversityby.me and we will have diversity map. Um, you can find us and you can find me WP Alex. If you have a company and you think that you're doing enough about diversity or you think you're not doing enough, uh, you can ask, uh, contact me. We'll give you some advices how to improve processes and procedures and we'll put you on diversity map. There will be a map with, you, you will be able to uh, post blog posts to, let's say, share your experiences. And I think that it will be a great place, like good starting point to share experiences in our community and to improve diversity and inclusivity in, at least in our community and our industry. Thanks a lot again. Mm -hmm.